those of you new to the room today, a uh, special welcome to you. This is Craig at Max Trading, and I'm here along with Eusebio. Uh, Chris is usually here, but it's uh, a little after midnight where he lives, so he's getting his rest, and that's a good thing. But it is a pleasure to welcome you to our real-time trading session today. We have the non-farm payroll news release coming up in just a few minutes now. And we're hoping that it will generate some nice market movement for us today. Of course, we don't know that. Uh, our crystal ball isn't that good, but that's what we're hoping for. And there are some particular conditions that we like to see, and Eusebio will explain all of those for us. And if we're so fortunate as to get those conditions, then some really good trading becomes a likelihood. If we do not get those conditions, then uh, it's, it's a maybe as to whether we'll see some good price action or not. And if the price action is poor, Eusebio will often choose to enter a trade that we normally would never take, and we call that forcing a trade. In other words, it's a risky trade, and we know that, and usually we would stay a stay away from it, but for the sake of demonstrating the max methods, uh, Eusebio might choose to enter that sort of trade today. We really appreciate Eusebio being here to take us into the charts for this trading session. For some of you, this is your first opportunity to trade with Eusebio. You're about to find out that he is a very good trader, and you'll, you'll learn something every time as you watch him trade. So I'm glad that you have that opportunity today. The methods that you will see on the charts are those which are taught in the MAX courses, which are beginning in just a few days now. Uh, some of you have already registered, and others are still considering it. I hope that you'll ask any last-minute questions that you may have, and we'll try to make sure that all of those questions get answered before we close the session today. Thanks again for being here, and Eusebio, I think we're good to go, ready to get started. So I'll pass the microphone along to you. Thank you very much, Craig. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you today in this room for the non-farm payroll. Okay, we are at around now five minutes from the news release with the non-farm payroll. So uh, most of you know my chart. I'm using uh, for the moment uh, constant range bar chart. We have on our chart our uh, max uh, template with some uh, indicators, but the, the two main uh, indicators are the ETF line, which are these very nice regular uh, orange and yellow line, we call the ETF line, and its companion indicator, the slow bias or long-term uh, <coughs> uh, perspective, um, it is in red and green. Technically, when we have the green, the green color, we will consider only long trade. When we have the red color, we will consider the uh, short trade. Uh, but of course, all the trade we take must be uh, taken in agreement with the context. And the context, the main context today is made uh, with two aspects. First of all, a short context on the pound due always to the same Brexit problem in UK. And now with the non-farm payroll, as well as in USA, then in uh, Canada, we have two non-farm payroll today. Uh, and so, uh, and to define our trade in agreement with the context, we have our entry setups. And the fast bias is used for some of our entry setup as a confirmation. So, and I will try to describe everything I can describe uh, outside the, the courses, of course, in due time. So, you have also horizontal lines on some of my chart. These represent max price levels. The colors are not important uh, at all. They all represent possible supply uh, and demand uh, level, and we have to take them into account when we consider entering a trade or closing a trade. These levels are prepared every Saturday. And so the, the level you are seeing now for the moment on my chart have been prepared last Saturday. And so uh, you can see that the price nicely respect, uh, for example, this uh, dashed horizontal uh, blue line, so uh, as a support or as a resistance level. And you can see the different level where the price moves 
and respect these levels in a very, very uh, nice way. So, but they, the price does not necessarily respect all these levels, but very, very uh, often. So. <clears throat> So let's check how much time we are left before the news release. We have less than two and a half minutes. So let's check on the calendar. If I update the calendar, so we will have the green button. And let me show, in fact, my scenario, because this is important. So uh, I always prepare that for each non-farm payroll. So on the US dollar, so we are today on the 6th of uh, September, if I'm right, yes. So the forecast for the non-farm employment change is 163K, the unemployment rate 3.7%, and the average hourly earnings 0.3%. Uh, In order to have valid conditions to trade the non-farm payroll and to get sustainable and directional movement, we must see a deviation big enough. And so if the data released is more than 200 or 210K, and if the unemployment rate will be smaller than 3.6%, and provided we have also an average hourly earnings larger than 0.4%, we will have to consider the US dollar as bullish. So the US dollar should strengthen. And so a pair like the pound US dollar can be shorted. On the contrary, if we have an, uh, an, an employment change less than 110, 120K, and the unemployment rate larger than 3.8%, and similarly, similarly, if the average hourly earnings is smaller, then we have to consider the US dollar as bearish. So the US dollar should weaken. And so we can go long on the pound US dollar, for example, in all the other situations. So uh, we will not have a nice, tradable situation. And similarly, with the CAD, I have also my uh, numbers to define the context of the non-farm payroll, whatever the scenario. But these are, in fact, the scenarios I will consider with these two non-farm payrolls. So, Let's now focus on the news which is due in a few seconds now. And we never rush on the, on the chart. We wait with patience that the news release is made. We will still to wait two minutes because what the calendar here on Forex Factory does not show is two minutes after the non-farm payroll, we have the revision of the previous months, which can also influence, in fact, the market. So, so there is no need to, to rush, and we can analyze quietly, calmly, uh, what the news uh, has been. <clears throat> so normally the news is uh, really, so we have 130. We have a deviation of 30K. This is unfortunately not enough to create a big deviation. So we have a moderate deviation, but it is not enough, unfortunately, to create some movement for the US dollar. And the unemployment rate stays unchanged. So it is not a big surprise. Uh, for the CAD, we have a way, way larger employment change, but we have no change in the unemployment rate. So we are not in the conditions to create sustainable and directional movement. So the impact should be limited. Negative impact on the US dollar, but not big enough to create uh, important uh, movement. So, uh, and you can see the market does not react fast to these news releases, so that the market is almost not moving uh, at all. So this is what happens when the non-farm payroll, in combination with the, the unemployment rate, uh, does not produce a deviation big uh, enough. So, so this means that for the main pairs I have on my chart, uh, mainly uh, not many, they are all pound by these circumstances, and how do I de de define them? It's very easy on our website, so here, <clears throat> where we define every weekend some geopolitical elements we have to consider, which may influence the market. We have a reduced economical calendar where we consider only the news which may have uh, an impact, and then we have our top 10 list pairs. And when we compare uh, that top 10 list pair with the news release, we have a recommendation for each day of the week. So for today, we had five pairs, the pound card, the pound US dollar, the pound yen, and the pound kiwi or pound Aussie. And 
uh, this page is updated every Saturday, so uh, every weekend, and you can access to it very freely, provided you uh, type that uh, address, www.maxreadingsystem.com forward slash news watch. So it is a free information we give to uh, all our MAX members, but to everyone who is interested with this kind of information. There is also a text below uh, this information which explain how to interpret uh, all these information. And just for you to, to check the validity of this information, we have on the page also the information of previous weeks. Uh, and we have, I don't know exactly how many weeks we have, so uh, we have perhaps two months or three months of past uh, data, depending on uh, what the website allows us uh, to do. So these informations are freely accessible, so feel free to use it uh, at your convenience. So Now we are not in tradable situation with the non-farm payroll, and so we have to make the assumption that the context we had before the non-farm payroll uh, is still valid. My bias was especially because we have uh, the pound pairs, here uniquely uh, pound pairs, my bias is uh, short on the pound. And so, because on all these six pairs, the pound is the first currency, so the, 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 the main currency, uh, I will consider only short trade, but they, there will they will be a f a forced to trade. Uh, forcing a trade, as Craig has explained, is a trade normally we should not take because we don't have the, the conditions for nice movements. And But this will have the advantage to illustrate our trade risk management process. Uh, in fact, uh, when we consider a trading system, it is important to define what are the movements we want to trade, uh, how we can identify these movements through our entry setups, how we validate an entry setup in order to have a trade, and a trade must always be validated under three types of conditions. Uh, technical conditions is the setup uh, valid set up on the technical point of view, the risk aspect is the risk appropriate, but also the, the the global context. So is the trade in agreement with the context? Because my context is uh, short on all these pound pairs, I will consider only short trade. So I will follow in terms of our bias indicator, the slow bias, when the slow bias will be red, which is the case now for all the, the pound pairs. So I'm waiting for a short entry setup. Um, and then we have to define how to handle the trade. How do we adjust our stop loss? How do we make scaling? If we make scaling, how do we make scale out? And how we consider to close, to totally close the trade. So, and then uh, because we have also to define when uh, a movement we are trading uh, may possibly exhaust. I don't say necessarily reverse, but at least exhaust. An exhaustion of the movement can be, of course, followed by a reversal. But it's not always the case. Sometimes the prevalent trend may resume after some pause. And so we have to consider these two uh, aspects. So I'm waiting with patience for the price to reverse, to come back in a downtrend, in the downtrend. So uh, perhaps the price is still a bit volatile due to this uh, news release, and so the market is uh, testing, is considering in which direction to continue the movement. So, <clears throat> oh, uh, Jose, uh, you know, uh, some brokers, in fact, uh, have decided for a long time period now to freeze the, their platform when there is an important news release. And there is a reason for that. Uh, the reason is, uh, most of the time, I don't say this is real, but I see that perhaps we'll have a setup in the pound queue. Let me check, and I will come back to the explanation uh, in a moment. So let me check here. Uh, we may have, let me set the MTM on the pair. Because if we have a potential trade, I would like to illustrate through a false trade, so our trade risk management. So that way, let me adjust the stop loss, which should be here. 
So this candle is not a valid setup bar, but the next one could be. Yeah, the next one should be. But the price is, for the maximum, you recognize that the price is ranging, so we are in a concession zone mode. So we have also to define our support level, which will be here. And so we will have to wait for the breakout of this support level before considering so an entry. Let me check on the other pairs. So nothing on the pound yen, nothing on the pound OZ for the moment, but we need to be ready. Nothing on the pound CAD, nothing on the pound US dollar, nothing on the pound C. So the best candidate for the moment is the pound Kiwi. So some bro brokers uh, freeze their platform during an important news release. And one of the reasons, perhaps the most important reason, is the relationship they have with their uh, liquidity providers. Some liquidity providers uh, require to have um, enough uh, orders uh, for them to accept uh, the orders. And so this may force the broker to aggregate many orders from their customers. And so this can take time. And during that time period, so the brokers hold the trades and maybe perhaps the counterparty of the customer's orders. And so during that time period, if the broker has taken the trades in his own book, he will um, he will uh, f he will be facing a risk, of course, and to limit that risk, so they freeze the platform. And the aim of freezing the platform is to prevent the traders to take orders, because this helps them, the brokers, so to limit the, the, the risk if a, a customer takes an order. So some brokers do not freeze their platform because either they can uh, route their order. Yeah, some other increase the, the, the spread instead, uh, indeed, for the same reason, by the way. And so uh, it depends how fast they can be in contact with their liquidity provider, how fast their liquidity providers take the orders, so how they can edge their position if the brokers uh, are initially the counterparty of the customers. So. And so you can, in fact, uh, to know that you can contact the broker and let them to explain uh, that aspect of their business model. So oh, if your platform freezes, so that there is a reason, uh, Jose, if they don't tell you that they freeze the platform that and the platform is freezing, so uh, they are not necessarily correct in their explanation if you understand what I mean. So we can adjust a little bit our support level here, just a little bit here. This will not change anything. Okay, I have no time. So we have here the the breakout which has happened. Unfortunately, the setup is not valid. We don't have all the conditions to be fulfilled. We have to wait for another uh, opportunity. So one of the important conditions in this area is not fulfilled to have a valid setup. I should have some time to adjust a little bit my support level and you can see the price comes back inside the range. My stop loss will be a bit too small. I have to widen it a little bit that way for example and let's check the other pair so nothing, nothing Nothing, nothing, nothing. The best candidate after the pound Kiwi will be most probably the pound uh, Aussie. But you see the non farm parallel is not creating so uh, big movements to date, even if the numbers uh, has some deviation with the forecast. Yeah, there may be uh, another uh, explanation, Marv, um, uh, of the platform freezing, indeed, which may be a technical uh, aspect. So, uh, too many charts, uh, too many indicators, too many bars on each chart. You can limit, when on your live platform, you can limit the number of bars which are displayed to the minimum. Uh, number of bar, for example, 1,000 bar, it's well, well enough, and you will eliminate most of the freezing uh, or slowdown of your uh, platform. But now, 
uh, this does not necessarily eliminate all the freezing problems which can still be due to the to the broker because and this will happen essentially with uh, the news release and important news releases so another possibility is uh, during a news release you may have uh, in the data feed a lot of quotes many more than usual and MetaTrader is not fast enough to handle all the quotes and so this may be also a reason why the platform is freezing so uh, Rami no you, I don't totally agree with your um, with your comment your comment makes sense uh, of course and I'm going to read it so um, most of the news is contradictory and rarely one way so I don't see the importance of the news that's what I watched recently uh, in fact the subject of the news release oh here we have the breakout so let me see here uh, and so the, this setup no it's not a valid setup so still not the appropriate condition uh, <clears throat> Your comment is important because the subject is way more complex than you may possibly uh, consider. Uh, in fact, not all, first of all, not all the news releases are um, equally important. Some news releases are way more important than other news releases. For example, the non-farm payroll, the interest rates announcement are way more important than um, a news release like, uh, let's say, uh, in USA, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index, on the contrary, is very important in UK or in the Eurozone. So the same type of news is not necessarily identical or has the same importance depending on the country or the economic area. Now, there is another point. Uh, there are several types of news release. In our courses, we call them type A, type B, type C. The type A news, an example of type A news uh, is the non-farm payroll, is always important whatever the, the economy of the corresponding country is in its economic cycle. The type B news are a news which are important only in specific portion of the economic cycle. So they are not always important. So there are times when they are important, there are times when they are not important. And there are many other news which are never important, the type C news, for example, the ISM uh, news. They are important on a, on a long term, longer term perspective, but uh, in day trading they are less important. And so you can take in one month, so all the news on the US dollar, for example, and you can see that for the same currency, the dollar, for example, you may have some contradictory reason. Yes, the, uh, result. This may be true. But what you have to consider is how uh, the economy is developing um, through, or how do you understand the development of the economy through all these news releases. And so if the economy is well, nicely developing, if a fundamental news release is negative, this will have a limited impact in the market. If it is online with the general behavior of the economy, it will have more emphasis, emphasis or importance uh, on the impact uh, it may have uh, in the market. So uh, now we should have perhaps, let me check, not so easy to, to check. It should be perhaps, we'll see. And so this is why the, the news release sometimes seems contradictory. And there is a last, um, a, a last behavior in the market which can mislead the retail traders. So uh, it's the behavior of the, the, the way the traders in the big banks or in the big hedge funds uh, behave to handle their position. You know that when they want to establish a position, when they want to increase their position, they have to find the necessary liquidities or counterparties. If they want to buy, they need to find sellers. If they want to sell, they need to find buyers. And so with an important news release, for many of them, they have better forecast than any economical calendar. And so they know how the market or how they will move the market because only the, the big boys move the market. And so if they want to take, for example, short position, they need to find buyers. And so in a first step, they will 
some other says manipulate the market so they will push the price in the opposite direction to find liquidities, to find more buyers. Because you know that when the price is going upward, this will attract more buyers. And at some point when they will have enough liquidities, they will have their position in the right direction and then you will see the price moving in the right direction. So this is why you need to be patient until the fundamental movement establishes. This can take a few minutes, this can take a few hours sometimes. This is why the news release is a real complex uh, subject to handle or to integrate in your trading uh, process. So. Uh, they combine, Rami, the, the general trend and the, the, the news uh, are complement each other. Okay, we have a setup here and so I can, yes, I can take here a short trade. My stop loss is good, a bit large, but uh, okay. So th they combine together. Usually to have, to have an improved interpretation of a news release or even to have a forecast of what a news release can have, you can observe a higher time frame trend. If your higher time frame trend is downward, for example, on the pound US dollar, let's take for example the pound US dollar, this may possibly indicate that the news will be good because the big boys are already positioned to the downside in such a case. But this is not uh, always true. There are always some exceptions nothing unfortunately is 100% exact. So I hope my comment has been clear enough, So, but really believe me the, the, the news release is really a complex subject. So, And we can see that the, the behavior of the big boys facing the news release is changing over time. They don't trade, they, they don't adjust their position nowadays as, as they were doing 10 years ago. Uh, until 10 years, 12 years ago, it was way easier so to trade the news. It was not uncommon 12 years ago to wait a few seconds before the market was reacting to a news release and in the case of a deviation big enough, so uh, we could be sure almost 100% of the case, so where the market would go uh, for the few uh, coming hours. Nowadays, it's no longer true. So we need to be much more uh, careful. So here I'm short on the pound uh, kiwi, and you can see that immediately after the entry, this happens very frequently, especially when we are using uh, CRB chart, the price has made a small pullback and now is coming back. You see here on these two panels, I will explain uh, in a moment uh, some important information, but let me check what is happening. So on the other pair, I would like to take a trade on another pair, so uh, perhaps we can choose the pound yen or the pound uh, kiwi, so they are pretty much similar. Um, I will take the pound US dollar. The news release has been somewhat uh, negative uh, or disappointing, but not a big surprise, so no impact in the market. So normally the prevalent trend should continue. Or we have to choose. We can take the pound yen or the pound US dollar. I will take the pound yen. I like the pound yen. So I will set my MTM also on the pound yen. And I will explain in a moment so the numbers we have on these two panels. So what I'm going to do also to better see the two pairs, I will widen my chart that way. And so everybody will also see in details what is happening on the chart. So. We may have possibly a setup here in the pound yen. Yes, it is a valid setup. My stop loss is good. We have rules to fix the stop loss. I can even take it a bit smaller. And I'm waiting for the price to reach my entry level, which will be in this area. <clears throat> in the meantime, as you can see, in the pound kiwi, the price is moving downward in the direction of the, my bias. Remember I have said my bias was to the downside for the pound and so short for the pound pairs. Oh, thanks uh, Rami. 
Yeah, in fact, things are never as simple or as easy as explained on many websites or in many books. So, haven't you found that more books you read, more confused you may be, and you never find, in fact, a good answer? Okay, I'm short also on the pound yen, and so now, now let me explain so what we have on these two uh, panels, on these four panels. But let me check first of all if I have not to take some action here on the pound kiwi, because once we are in a trade we have to consider how to exit the trade. The first point is we had a stop loss size of let's say 28 pips on the pound kiwi, perhaps a bit large, but the this pair is somewhat volatile. I will make an exit, not exactly as the rules we have in the max, but using what I call a discretionary decision, a discretionary situation. And my discretionary situation is the following. I want to make my first partial exit half of the size trade only if the price gives me a profit, a minimum profit of 15, let's say, um, 14 and 3, 17 pips. So I want to have a minimum profit of 17 pips so on this level or below this level. And this corresponds to half size of my stop loss plus the spread. Uh, <clears throat> I will explain and I will understand why uh, in a moment. So, and because we are limited in this session, we are limited to two hours, I will not wait for an exit setup when the price will be below this blue line level, but as soon as the price will reach this level, I will make an MX. An MX consists in closing half of the trade. Indeed, whenever we open a trade, the trade is considered as made of two units. I can show that in the terminal panel. Here, you can see on the pound uh, kiwi, the trade size is 52 microlots. Half of that is 26, so I will close half of that. Okay, and 40 microlots or 4 minutes for the pound uh, yen. And I will come back to this panel when I will make my MX. So an MX consists in closing one unit, half of the trade size. Now these two small panels are one button, uh, one click button. So uh, it helps to open a trade to sell or to buy. The button indicates sell or buy depending where the stop loss uh, is. Our stop loss is an emergency stop loss. I will explain later what why we call it an emergency stop loss. And we have an MX button and an XXX button. MX means we close one unit. XXX means we close all the remaining open unit, whatever the number of units, because we can make scalings, of course. Whenever we make a scaling, we add two add, we add two new uh, units to the position, creating progressively a larger uh, position. So. On the larger uh, panel, one per uh, pair or one per trade on that pair, so we have uh, some information. We have two columns of information, a column named symbol and a column named global. The symbol column gives the numbers, the result of the trade for the pairs we are considering. For example, here, this panel is for the pound kiwi here, and the second panel is for the pound yen. And the global column represent, they are identical on both panels, represent the result of all the trades opened simultaneously. On this panel, there are two important lines, the ESL result and the XXX profit. The ESL result always represents the result of the trade should the price hit the stop loss, wherever the stop loss may be, because of course we will adjust the stop loss along the trade. And so you can see that on the pound Kiwi, the loss will be minus 0.98%, on the pound Yen, minus 0.96%. Why these two numbers? Because the risk I have taken on uh, each of these trades is 1%. It is not exactly 1% here, because there was a round off in the calculation of the size of the trade. The XXX profit represents the profit of the trade if I close the price now at any moment. So, and so if I close the, the trade now on the pound yen, I will make a, a, a tiny profit, 0.13% and 0.37% on the pound kiwi. And we have intermediary results in percentages or in pips. 
about the remaining open unit um, uh, for the closed unit and so on. So <clears throat> now let's see you uh, closely on the pound kiwi if the price will succeed to reach and stay somewhat in my uh, target profit area to let me make an MX because I want to show you the importance of the, the trade risk management and how taking such uh, profit can help to reduce, importantly, the risk we have on the trade. We have two mechanisms to progressively reduce and somewhat cancel the risk is, of course, that MX mechanism and the stop loss adjustment. So. My stop loss is a bit large. We have all that range here. I can set my stop loss above that area, so I can reduce it. I can reduce it by a few pips. How many pips? We can see here around uh, seven or eight pips. Uh, this seems perhaps a small distance, but look the impact of this ESL adjustment here on the risk. We have a risk of 0 0.98%. If I simply adjust my stop loss now here at this level, so my risk will be reduced to minus 0 0.71%. So I have reduced my risk by almost a little more than one quarter of 1%. And similarly for the global risk for the two trades, of course. Let me define also on the pound yen where my minimum profit level will be. So for the pound yen, we have a spread of uh, one pips in general. We have here a stop loss size of let's say 25 pips, half of that is 12 and a half, 12 and a half and one is 13 and a half, 13 and a half will be a bit higher, so in this area, right here, yeah, that's good enough. <clears throat> So the price is making another attempt to reach my minimum level. Now, when we are in a trade, we are uh, able to use, in order to close the trade, uh, all our exit techniques. Within the max, we have approximately 20 exit techniques. At any moment, we know exactly uh, which uh, exit technique or exit techniques, because at some point we may have several one uh, triggering at the same time, at any moment we know which one uh, triggers. We have several types of exit technique. We have exit technique based on some indicator. For example, here we have two momentum indicators. Uh, this one especially is called the Stoerosai. So the price is reaching. Okay. You see the price is crossing the my line, so I will be patient before making an exit. I will not rush too fast. If the price comes back to that level, I will make my MX. So why make less if I can make more? But here I'm approaching uh, another potential exit setup. So we have exit setup based on indicator either below the main chart or on the main chart. We have exit setup based on pure price action. We have exit setup based on a combination of price action and some of our indicators. We have also uh, exit setup based on timing consideration, for example, the news releases, but also some other uh, timing aspect because not all the time during the day are made equal. And we have also two other important longer term exit technique, which are called movement invalidation and trend reversal. A movement invalidation is when the movement we consider makes no longer sense. So here we may have possibly an exit setup preparing. I need to watch that very, very carefully to not miss the exit. And it will be below my minimum level, required level. <clears throat> The pound yen is not moving uh, a lot for the moment, so we need to be more patient. The stop loss on this pair is becoming very large, so I can tighten the stop loss. For that, in order to adjust the stop loss, we have uh, several rules we can uh, use. And so I will adjust my stop loss in this area, reducing further the risk to 
minus 0.19%. So I have almost eliminated the risk on this pair. And you will see that as soon as I will make an MX on this pair, so close one unit, this trade will become a risk-free trade. In the meantime, when I observe my currency meter, I can see that the pound is really weak, weakening, and the Kiwi is the stronger currency. In fact, I can show you my currency meter. There is no problem for that. You see here, this is the Kiwi, which is very strong, and the red line is the, the pound. So the pound is the weakest currency. The Kiwi is the strongest currency. And for the pound yen, the yen is the blue line, is one of the stronger currency, strongest currency. See, my platform is also a bit uh, freezing, so we need just to be a bit patient. Of, of course, uh, when it will uh, unfreeze, uh, it, it will be possible to see the price having moved upward, so this sometimes happens. Because we are not a trading group, so I'm forced here, because I cannot show uh, legally um, live trades. So I'm using a demo platform. So, uh, okay, you see the price has moved nicely downward. This, set, this red candle was an exit setup bar, but the exit, I can see that on matcha, has not been triggered. This red candle is another... Uh, exit setup bar due to an indicator we use here, which is the store RSI, and uh, is the price following through and hit my exit level? My exit level will be uh, just around this level, way below my minimum level, so I'm guaranteed to make a nice profit. So if the price will move to this level, I will make an MX. So in the meantime, I can further reduce my stop loss now as a guideline or as one of the rules we can use to adjust the stop loss is to use this pink or red line here. And so I'd like to keep my uh, stop loss a few pips, around five pips above that. And so I will adjust my stop loss on this level. And because we are below my entry level, we are now risk-free with this trade. You can see now I'm looking a 0.11 percent minimum profit, so I'm sure that I will close this trade with a profit. So, in the pound yen for the moment, so uh, I still need to handle my stop loss where it is. I have no possibility to handle my stop loss, and my minimum level profit is not. Uh, reached yet, so we need to be more patient. So the context is good to see the pound yen also going downward, so we need to be confident and patient. In the meantime, I will draw a magenta vertical line, dashed line on my chart where I have made my MX, because we have some convention with uh, within the max to indicate where the entry setup and where the exit setup uh, have been, we indicate an entry setup with a green line and with a magenta line, an exit uh, setup. So, so we are left with one open unit. I can show you that in the terminal panel. You remember with the pound kiwi, so the... Uh, oh, I have not made my MX. No, I have simply adjusted. Oh, I, I need to make my... I make my MX now, okay? I'm a, I am a bit late, but anyway... I am a bit late. I have made my MX, so you can see the size has been reduced by half. In the history uh, panel here, you will see in the account history, you will see that half of the size has been closed with a profit, uh, of course. And you can see that the exit is made a little bit higher than my level, because when we close a short trade, the close is made on the ask price. This is why when I specify my exit level, I always take into account the spread. I add the spread. Okay? And so you can see that I have made a nice profit on this uh, unit, a profit of approximately here uh, 24, almost 25 pips, let's say 24 pips. It is indicated here, pips taken 24.6. In fact, and now you can see that with the stop loss uh, having
been been adjusted in this level. And my partial profit, I'm looking uh, 0.48% profit on this pair. If I close the trade now, I'm not too far away from 1% profit. If I close the two trade now, I'm making 1.11% profit on my trading account. But there is no reason the second unit of the pound kiwi now can be closed with three possible alternatives. The trader has to choose how to close the final ex, uh, units, either on the next exit setup or on the movement invalidation or on the trend reversal when the slow bias mainly will turn from red to green. But you can see that with the two trades, in fact, with the two trades, I'm still at risk. I have still a small risk on the two trades being combined. The profit has not been large enough in the pound kiwi for the moment to set my two trades risk-free. But the risk is a small risk now, less than half percent risk for the two trades. Yeah, then these levels are really nice levels, aren't they? <laughs> they are a nice way to, um, to, to consider for our exit. So, uh, Zhu Zhu Yan, uh, I, I apologize if I pronounce wrongly your, your name. So, why the pound is weak today? Uh, in fact, <clears throat> you know that uh, in UK for more, a little more than three years now, uh, they have, they are discussing the Brexit. Okay, so more than three years ago, three and a half years ago, there has been a referendum and the Brexiters have won the, uh, have win or won, I don't, I never know how to use the, the correct uh, grammar in, in English. So uh, the, the referendum has been in favor of the Brexit. And uh, with the Brexit, so the pound, it was planned a long time uh, before the, the, the Brexit referendum, it was sure that the pound should be devaluated. And this is why if you observe the pound pairs for the last three years since the Brexit, so almost four years now, since the Brexit, the pound, the pound pairs have decreased. And so for during a certain period of time, when it was almost sure that there would have been a Brexit with a soft deal, which has been the deal obtained by uh, the, the, the former or the, the later Prime Minister uh, Theresa May, the big boys were playing uh, a hard Brexit, in fact. And so whenever there was a news, uh, a talk, an interview in favor of a hard Brexit, the pound pairs were going upward, so the pound was uh, getting stronger. But with time, when the Brexit uh, was more and more certain, either with a soft Brexit or a no-deal Brexit, the reality always came uh, through in, in the market, and so we have seen a continuation of the weakness of the pound. And today, the probability of a Brexit is still very high, even with the last event in the UK government, despite the fact that a no-deal Brexit uh, law has been voted by the Parliament against uh, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister does not uh, give up, so this is a reason why the pound is still weak nowadays. So, because all these events continue to introduce uncertainty on the pound. And so the market does not like uncertainty. As soon as some agreement uh, will come, we will see progressively, this is my opinion, a personal opinion, we will see progressively the pound regaining so some uh, favor in, in the market. So, But the pound is weak for several days now, okay? So the yen is progressively reaching <clears throat> my level. We are at just a few pips, so uh, three pips approximately. Now the market seems to a little bit pause, so we need to be patient. But you have seen here on the pound uh, kiwi how by using the rules we have, either the strict rules or some of our district 
discretionary situations rule. So we can fine tune the risk we have on the trade. And in fact, the aim of a max trader, once a trade has been taken in agreement with the context, the aim of the trader max trader is not to optimize in a first step the profit which can be extracted from a trade, but the aim as a first step is to reduce progressively the risk on the trades until we possibly reach a, a state of risk-free. And once we are risk-free, then we can concentrate on how we can possibly increase the profit or optimize the profit in the trade. So the first priority of a max trader is always the risk aspect, never the profit. So. Now, with this unique red candle, we can see that our pink and red line have dropped nicely. This helps me, in fact, to continue to adjust my stop loss. I will adjust my stop loss just on this level and observe how the two risk will decrease. First of all, this will increase the locked profit on the pound kiwi, but this will also decrease the global risk on the two trades. So let's do that. I will set my stop loss in this area now, oh, yeah, here, and you can see I'm looking now almost three quarter of one person profit on the pound uh, kiwi, and my total risk on the two pairs is one quarter of one person. So this means that I am almost a break even for the two positions. So. I can reduce somewhat my risk on the pound yen. We have several rules to adjust the stop loss, so, and I will apply one of uh, them. I will adjust my stop loss here, and let's see the impact on the pound yen. The pound yen, now the risk is reduced to a little less than 0 0.7%, but most importantly, now my two positions, my two positions globally are risk free. In the worst case scenario, if the price reverses quickly and hit my stop loss in both pair, I will be break even. So, because banking a nice profit in the pound kiwi, but still having a loss in the pound yen. But of course the aim is also, if the price moves in favor of the pair, to continue to reduce that risk in the pound yen, to increase the, lock, the total locked profit. And as long as my context is not changing, and as long as I'm in the direction of the trend, this is for me a reason to stay patient, and so to wait, to wait and see, as the UK people would say, a UK trader would say. A nice source of information, if you want to keep yourself informed regularly what is happening around the world which may influence the market, at least in the main countries, is in the Forex Factory calendar. I'm going to show you that. So, uh, you have here the, the news panel. If you click on the news panel here, you will have all these headlines. And they are also time-stamped, and so you, you can see at some moment if one of these um, headlines may have an influence in the, in the market. So. I have not watched what has happened for the, the news on the CAD. So for the CAD, oh, oh yes, I, have, I remember the unemployment rate was unchanged. The employment chain was uh, favorable. So this is not the appropriate conditions to go long on the CAD. But the pound CAD, if we look on the pound CAD, probably the pound CAD has moved a bit uh, down. So not a lot. You see the, the conditions is not appropriate to create nice movement in the appropriate direction. So, okay, I'm going to be stopped out here on the pound kiwi. It is done. So the pound kiwi has been closed with a total profit of 0.71%. And I'm now left with the pound yen uh, pair. 
Now that the trade has been closed in the pound uh, Kiwi, what I have to do now is to wait for another opportunity. If we have another short entry, this is a setup I can take. Of course, the setup will be in agreement with the context. So, but we are still at risk with the pound yen here. Even if globally I have no problem at all. Of course, whenever we have an exit setup appearing, and so this candle was an exit setup, this blue candle, this one was an exit setup, we can apply the exit rule, the corresponding exit rule, but as I have said, I will not apply them, I will apply my discretionary uh, decision, uh, can you, because we are in the conditions to apply such kind of decision, uh, discretionary decision does not mean subjectivity, okay, does not mean subjectivity. So. Uh, <laughs> Edward, you are in the pound yen and you will close the trade in a moment or so. Don't fear, don't fear to stay in the trade, <laughs> Edward. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but as a last resort, you are the trader responsible of your of your own trade, uh, of course, and so it's up to you to decide what you do with your trade. So I was explaining that um, this questionary situation uh, is not a subjective decision, so we have strict rules for any subjective, uh, any um, discretionary decision, and so, um, and the, the, the process behind a discretionary decision is always linked to the additional marginal risk we accept to take on the trade. Oh yeah, uh, Edward, you did your profit on the pound yen. Uh, of course, uh, the profit uh, has been made with the London, from the London Open. In fact, uh, the, the best, the best moment, most of the time, to trade a pair like the pound yen or like the pound pair is starting around the London Open. In fact, and if you have considered the the short size of the of the pair, you can see that around the London Open, so we could have started in this area and take that short trade, that short trade, and now uh, that that short trade, not because we are facing the, the non-farm period, but this last short trade now. And similarly for all the other pound pairs. Uh, the Wall Street the equity market indeed will open in uh, nine minutes now, uh, indeed, and this may represent a moment when we can see a, a small reversal in the price, not necessarily a trend reversal, but a small reversal in the price. In fact, a reversal in relationship with the, the underlying movement the price is doing. And so here I would like to give uh, an additional small explanation about my discretionary decision. And I have just explained that behind the process there is always an argument with the trade risk management in order to avoid any subjective consideration because subjective consideration uh, always leads to disaster uh, in trading. So, uh, in fact, <clears throat> The first reason is I can accept to take a full loss on the stop loss even if I have already reduced my stop loss, so it will no longer be a full loss. But uh, the, the, one of the main reasons is because I always take a small risk per trade. My risk per trade is maximum 1%. But this is due to my temperament because I am a very risk uh, averse uh, trader, so my risk is always small for each of my trade. It's rarely, rarely above one person. Most of the time, between half a percent and one person. And the second argument is: so two years ago, I have made um, a huge statistics on all my trades since 2008. 
I had several thousands of trades. Applying strictly the rules of the max is almost never a discretionary decision, like the one uh, I have described here for my first uh, exit. So, and I have realized that if uh, I would have applied that rule since the beginning of my uh, trades, I would have made a way larger global profit. And so now I systematically use in my personal trade this discretionary decision. So I accept eventually a full loss, which is rare, because in the meantime, very often I'm able to adjust my stop loss, but I accept to have a loss on the stop loss, adjusted or not. But uh, I prefer to wait for my first exit, an MX, I prefer to wait to have enough profit on that first exit. So. Of course, this creates some more volatility in my bankroll. Um, this increases just a little bit my uh, average loss per losing trade, but it increases my average profit per profitable trade, and globally this is really profitable. And this is especially uh, important when we use a price type representation like a constant range bar where it seems that there is more volatility. There is no more volatility, but we have many more details in the price movement than in a time bar chart. So if the price continues to go upward, we will be here in an, a typical example of what we call a movement invalidation. So. Uh, if you remember, I have said that my bias was short for the pound uh, yen, for all the pound pairs, in fact, except the European, because for the European we must be long. Uh, and a medium long term exit technique, I have explained we have two types of medium long term exit technique the movement invalidation and the trend reversal. Here, if the price continues to go upward, we will be in this area, precisely in this area just above my entry level, but this is a coincidence, we will be in a situation of a move, potential movement invalidation. And so, at worst, I will make my exit of this rate in this area, if the price goes there. We are in the movement invalidation area for the moment, but not yet at the point where I have to scratch the trade. And this is where the trader must have a lot of patience. As long as the rule to take a decision is not reached, is not fulfilled, so he must not take the decision. He must not rush to take the decision, he or she, of course. This is why discipline is so important. To remind me that I have to wait for the conditions to be fulfilled, I have on all my chart patience and disciplines. This is my mantra all along the day when I am in trades. Because very, 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 very often, so the price fails to reach my exit level by just one pipette or two pipettes. If I would rush on my decision, I would close my trade too early. And so very often, because I am patient and disciplined, the price comes back and finally the trades end as a losing trade. So patience and discipline are the two paying factors in trading. So most of the time we are paid because we are waiting for the appropriate conditions. And of course, if you are looking for another trade, there is no problem to watch what other pairs are doing. Of course, you can watch uh, in the selected pairs you have, for example, the pound OZ, the pound card, the pound Swiss, and so on. You can watch if there is no another opportunity. If all the pairs are moving, if all the pound pairs are moving approximately the same way, we may have some exceptions on specific pairs. So, due to, to the news release, precisely, or due to some events, you know that the CAD, for example, is also influenced by the price of some commodities, um, gold, for example, or oil. The OZ, the pound, the pound OZ, the OZ may be influenced by the price of gold, and the price of gold will itself move depending if the 
traders, the, the big traders in important banks or, the, or in important hedge funds consider they must go you know, risk on or risk off. If they consider they must be risk off, uh, they will move their uh, funds in less uh, risky or safer uh, assets like gold, for example, or like bonds, for example. If they are risk on, they will move their capital in more risky assets like the stock market, like the, uh, some currencies, for example. Okay, now I have to pay attention here. Okay, we are reaching the movement invalidation, almost level. I will scratch my head right on this dotted magenta line. So, if this is the case, and I will make an X exit closing my two units of the trade. But I need to see the price right on that level. As long as the price does not reach that level, I will stay in the trade. You see the price has failed by just how many pipettes? So here five pipettes, five, six pipettes has failed to reach my exitor. So I stay in the trade and this gives me another chance for the trade to be closed with a profit. We never know for sure uh, how the trade will close, will be closed. It's not because we are in agreement with the global contact that we have 100% certainty that the trade will be a profitable trade. Most of the trade will be, but not all. In the meantime, in the pound QE, we are still waiting for the trend to resume. Now, until when should we wait? Because this may be um, an important question. But I see a, a question, so in the chat, see a long question. I'm going to try to read it, so uh, I apologize for this question. No, there is no need to apologize. There is no forbidden question, so. So what is the difference between this wonderful explanation and what we will learn when participating in the advanced course in the MAX system? Are you currently trading without using the full max system are there technique that makes you more correct in selecting and managing uh, deals. Um, what about the advanced course on the max system? I apologize, but I'm eager to hear the full answer. Okay. <clears throat> so in the max primer, in the max uh, standard uh, course, uh, we teach so uh, uh, three aspects of trading: the, te the technical aspect the risk aspect and the, uh, an introduction to the global context. So the risk, the, the technical aspect is how can we identify the price patterns. Uh, okay, I am to scratch the trade here now. So I have closed the trade on the pound yen with a small loss, but you see globally, so I still, I have made a profit in fact on my two trades. So um, nice profit on the first one, small loss on the second one, so globally uh, profit, and I can show you that on the terminal panel, and after that I will come back to the the explanation, so you see a total profit, so on these two trades. So, um, the, concerning the global context, so um, especially in the MAX ETF standard course, I explain the basic concept we need to know to handle uh, correctly the news releases. And so uh, what is uh, the concept of the deviation, positive deviation, negative deviation, what are the different categories of news, the type A, the type B, the type C, when they are important, when they are not important, and all these kind of informations are also given in our news watch list on our website, I can show you here, so through this simplified economical calendar. So we only keep in this calendar the news which have an impact in the market. So, And you can read the explanation of this calendar here below this uh, web page. Now in the max uh, advanced course, in the max advanced course I consider the Forex as a more global perspective. Um, for that, so I explain uh, what is the correlation we can consider between the pairs. But more than the correlation, 
um, it's not the correlation between the pairs which is important, but how we can use these correlations to have an idea of what are the strong currencies and the weak currencies in the way to use a currency meter and when we can use a currency meter because a currency meter is not a holy grail. The currency meter will be extremely useful under several types of circumstances. One of these circumstances is precisely the news releases. So, uh, concerning the news releases, I go deeper into them explaining how we can exploit the news release themselves in order to have an idea of what to expect for the day we want to trade, what we have to expect for today, for example, depending on what has happened previously. And so the, the news release helps to define the type of behavior we should expect so the present day. And so uh, a third aspect I consider in the advanced uh, course is a deeper vision of the money management. So we can make a lot of things with the money management and I especially explain a technique to, uh, to completely control, let me check here what we have, we may have possibly, uh, we are in a concentration zone mode and so we have a support level in this area. I apologize for this interruption, but I need to check what is happening on my chart. And on the pound kiwi, we are in a counter trend mode, so no problem. This is an entry setup. It is a valid one. I have to set my stop loss in this uh, area. Yeah, I have to reset my two numbers here. Okay, and yeah, I take another sell trade here on the pound kiwi. So uh, I go deeper in the money management technique and I explain on that occasion a very special technique which helps to, uh, to have a control, uh, a total control of the drawdown. Uh, just to explain what this means. If we predefine, if we predefine a maximum drawdown of, let's say, 15% uh, of the trading account, 15%, so we can apply a very sp special procedure in such a way that uh, trade to trade, we will be granted to never exceed that initial predefined drawdown. And so this constitutes, in fact, a very important safety net for uh, the max traders. So. Uh, and so this is really a very powerful technique. So uh, we go deeper into the money management and trade risk management. We go deeper into the news release. We go deeper into some, cor some types of correlations uh, at a more global perspective of the Forex market. And the last point we consider in the Max Advanced course is all these situations I call discretionary situations. So I explain way more in detail what we call a discretionary decision and what we can do with them. So in order to, for example, make less MX and more scalings. So here that I am in a new trade on the pound kiwi, and again I uh, remember that it is a forced trade because we are not in the conditions for a trade after the non-farm payroll, I will fix my first level of profit here. My stop loss was uh, 20 pips, 20 divided by 2 is 10, plus the spread of 3 pips, so 13 pips. I will set my first level of profit here at 13 pips on this level here, in this area. Yeah, I'm good. <coughs> and for the pound yen, I'm still waiting for the setup to appear. So here we had an entry setup in this red candle. Sorry, this one. We have always a, an entry setup bar and then an entry bar. I hope this has answered your question, uh, Rami. So.
And we can see that the context for the moment has not changed, so I don't need to find any explanation because we can see that the, the Kiwi is still a strong currency and the pound is still weakening, so losing currency, and the yen is gaining strength. So these two short trades on the pound yen and the pound Kiwi make sense, in fact. Of course, this will not increase necessarily the probability to have winning trades. We still may have losing trades, of course. Nothing is 100% sure. Never. Now, I have reset the numbers on the panel, and the reason for that is the following. When you trade and you accumulate trades, positive trades, negative trades, you can so capitalize, you can compound your results. So you can compound if you have profitable trade, you can uncompound if you have uh, losing trades. And so this is what to do. When we reset the numbers in our two panels here, this means that we apply the compound process. So if we have an increasing trading account, progressively our trade size will increase and vice versa. If we do not reset, so this means that the size of the next trade will take into account the new balance of the account. If we do not reset the number, so uh, we will consider the initial balance of the day to calculate the trade size. So this means that uh, the trade size will only depend on the position of the stop loss. So, but without uh, integrating, without compounding the previous results. Some traders like to compound trade after trade, some other like to compound after day after day or week after week, so it's the choice of the trader. The label of the buy or sell button will depend where the stop loss is. If I move on the pound yen, for example, the stop loss below the present price, the button will become a buy button. So if I set the stop loss above the, the price, it will be a sell button. Now, when we see a possible change in the context, for example, through a currency meter, we can then try to find the reason why the context has changed. We know for the moment that it is not a news release because we have no other important news release for the rest of the day. But we can check the headlines in the news panel of Forex Factory or in any major financial newspaper like uh, uh, the Financial Times, like the Wall Street Journal, or some important website like Bloomberg, like Reuters, and so on and so on. There are a lot of uh, places where you can check for information, but don't take any information for granted. Personally, I ignore any information which is a personal opinion by someone, even if this someone is an important person. I ignore personal opinion. I consider only facts, objective facts. I am a very factual guy, so because only the objective, I can analyze only objective facts. I cannot analyze on an opinion. So. In approximately half an hour, we will have to wrap up this session. So let's see if the price will continue to move in the direction of the trend and will hit my minimum level here. In which case, uh, I will not wait for an exit setup due to the time limitation. If the price hits my minimum level, I will make automatically an MX just to illustrate again the trade risk management. But here, we may possibly reach a movement in validation. So. So there is some volatility in the market now, which may possibly go against uh, the, the trade. You see here the price has reached my um, magenta dotted line, but the price has come back very quickly. I've had no time to react. 
So sometimes uh, this happens, the market gives us uh, a chance to stay further in the trade. These pairs are usually very, very volatile. It, it is not impossible that the context is changing because we are seeing that the pound is reversing its, its strength. The pound is gaining strength through the currency meter. And so we need to understand why this could be possible. And so let's have a quick look to some of potential news here on the Fox Factory. Let's see if we have some news here. This is an old news for hours ago. Um, no, we have no special news for the moment in UK. So this is not the reason. So maybe this is simply um, an increase, a momentarily increase in the volatility. So. But you can also observe other websites, as I have mentioned, so the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, Reuters, Bloomberg. Barons also is an interesting media for longer term position. Okay, that gets ready here on the pound kiwi. You see the risk on the pound kiwi is minus 0.98%, so almost 1%. I have still the full risk on this trade. I can tighten a little bit my stop loss because my pink and red line are uh, a bit far away from my stop loss, or my stop loss is far away from uh, these lines. Okay, I have to make my MX. I have missed my MX. This is a difficulty with the CRB chart. The CRB chart reacts very fast, and when we give explanations, so uh, sometimes we miss the decision step. It's a pity I have missed that level. Let's see if the market will give me a second chance. It's a pity, but I do not complain. I am fully responsible of my decision, so I take them and they come. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for a breakout in the pound yen and I can somewhat adjust my support level in this area. See, the support level in the max are not a static level, they are dynamic levels, and sometimes we may adjust them to have better support level. But in this case, it will, it will not really improve because we have that other line, which will be an important line also. I can reduce a little bit my stop loss, so uh, here I will be at about 17 pips. Yeah, that's good enough. I will reduce my stop loss here. So reducing my risk by almost half. So in the worst case, you know, as you can see, my risk is reduced, so my potential loss will be way smaller than I had initially. And this is why I like my that discretionary decision I apply now system, systematically. It's it's not very frequent that I have a full loss on my initial stop loss. But let's pay attention here. Now I will not miss that MX if the MX happens.
The kiwi is regaining strength. The pound is somewhat posing now in terms of strength. So this means that the profit for the price to hit that level is good. Not a certainty, of course, but it's good. Ready? Ready? We have an exit setup triggering here, but we are above, I am above my minimum level, so I ignore it. Ready? Okay, I make my MX finally, taking into account the spread. And you can see that now, with the combined action of the stop loss adjustment and the MX closing half of the trade, my trade now is virtually break even. You see, in the worst case scenario, I cannot lose on this way. I can even adjust a little bit my stop loss to just begin to lock some profit, even a bit lower here, and I begin to lock a tiny profit here, but still a profit. Okay? But this is the worst case scenario here. Now, with the time flying, we are progressively approaching the Frankfurt close. The Frankfurt close will happen in a little more than one hour now, one hour and eight minutes. And when we have trends during the ASEAN session, and more importantly, uh, and more oftenly during the London session, these trends have a tendency to exhaust between the London close and the Frankfurt close. And so this means that taking additional trades now when we are approaching the Frankfurt close will become riskier and riskier. Staying in the trade at that moment is not a problem, but taking additional trades while approaching the London close is really risky, a risky uh, uh, proposition, especially for the pairs not containing an American currency like the US dollar or the CAD. There is no problem to open additional trade in uh, American pairs, so, uh, but for the ASEAN and European pairs, they will become risky. So now with the price moving, I can possibly adjust my stop loss. Yes, I can adjust my stop loss right here, looking a little more profit. So. Now, another way to close a trade, many traders like, is to close a trade on a profit objective. Not necessarily a price target. We see here we have a max price level, which may be a possible um, demand level. This could be possibly a reversal area for the price. We will see. If this happens, I will close the trade. But another possibility is to close the trade when the profit made on the trade reaches some level. Half a percent profit, one percent, two percent. So this is the choice of the trader. So now let's pay uh, close attention to what is happening here. And if the price, if the price crosses this level in a rather firm way, so I will ignore that level as a potential demand level. So I can delete this blue line, which represents nothing. <coughs> the next market price level will be all far away. The colors are not important. Uh, the colors are simply there to remind me which time frames I have used to define them, to make no confusion when I prepare my max price levels every Saturday. And they are made available on the Sunday, the next day. And so we have two subscriptions uh, formulas. We have a free subscription for four pairs. Uh, and anyone, uh, there is no need to be a max graduate to have access to, to these levels. So, uh, even the non-max graduate can accept them. So four pairs, the Euro-US dollar, the Euro-OZ, the pound yen, and the pound OZ. 
euh, sorry, de OZN, so the Euro US dollar, the Euro OZ, the pound yen and the OZN. And we have a paid subscription for around 30 instruments. So we have between 15 and 18 pairs, uh, all the majors plus uh, all the pairs in our top 10 list. Then we have some indices like the, the, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the uh, Nasdaq, the FTSE 100, the DAX. We have also gold and crude oil and uh, we have also the Bitcoin. So this represents approximately between 27 and 30 uh, instruments. So, and so this is uh, through a paid subscription which is I think around $49 per month. And so you can contact Chris if you are interested, or Craig, if you are interested, so to subscribe to one formula or to the other. And so he will post the, his uh, uh, email address, so in the chat area of go to webinar. So, uh, or he will certainly do that. And if you want to have more information, so of course, feel free to sent him an email. So now let's watch closely what the price will do here. We will have in this area in fact the confluence of two exit setup. We have this uh, max price level but we will have also something else. The max trader, the max standard trader will recognize what I mean. So between these two lines. But we have to wait for this candle first of all to close as a red candle. Okay, this candle now is an exit setup bar, yes. I have to make my XXX here. We have the rejection of the cell, so I will make my XXX. So, a little bit too late. This is uh, what often happens when I have to explain, but anyway. So, this trade, this second trade, has been closed with a nice profit of three quarters of one percent for the two units. We can see that in the terminal panel. So, terminal panel, you can see no open trade in the trade panel and the account history. So the pound kiwi or the pound kiwi has been closed. So the two units has been closed with a nice profit. So, okay. And so you see here, when we have trades in agreement with the context, and even when an important news release does not change the context, we have to take the trade in the direction of the context. So very often we will avoid many small losing trades and we have a high percentage winning rate uh, with these trades in agreement with the context. So, <clears throat> Okay, so have a great rest of the day. Have a great weekend, by the way, and thanks for your presence today. Okay, we will have to wrap up this session in around 15 minutes now. I will not take other trade to illustrate the process, perhaps if we have the breakout here in the pound yen, but it becomes uh, riskier to take that trade. Um, so, if you have any questions, so feel free to post them now. It's a, a good moment so to post them before we wrap up this uh, session. So. Any questions uh, is welcome. We never uh, hide questions. We try to answer all the questions, all the questions at our best. So there are, and there are no dumb questions. So all the questions deserve to be answered. Okay, I have closed run the discount uh, Kiwi trade because the price was reaching here what we call a max price level. This max price level is a potential uh, um, demand level. And so if it is really a demand level, it will not be a surprise to see the price reversing on that level. And so when the price has a tendency to reject that level, so this means that when the price comes close to this level, it may be right on the level, a little bit above, a little bit lower, and the price has a tendency to go higher. We have a risk here, 
And so we have a rule telling us that this is a nice opportunity to bank some profit. And because I was left with one opened unit, my previous unit has been closed in this area, I have been forced to close my second unit here. Okay? And of course, if the price crosses this level, I will have another, I will have to wait for another uh, entry setup to go short. This one is not a good setup because of what I'm seeing here. But if I have another opportunity, depending on the time, and the time will become more and more problematic now, I will skip the trade. Okay? Is it time to enter? Yes, it is a good time to enter the pound. It will be a riskier trade because we are approaching the Frankfurt close, but the price has not reached my entry level. I need to see my entry level in this area. So, in fact, how do we execute our trade? We have to wait for an entry setup, and once we have a valid entry setup, only if we have a valid entry setup, we define an entry level. And if the price reaches the entry level, we execute the trade. For the moment, the price has not reached the entry level, so I have no trade for the moment. And because the price now is going back inside this consolidation zone, we can see the price is ranging. It will depend how the candle will close, but let's suppose it's closing above the support level. This means that the price is uh, staying in the consolidation zone. I will have to wait for another opportunity, knowing that the time will become riskier and riskier. Okay? Does the explanation on the pound kiwi is enough? A run? Okay, nice. And you see, it happened that now that the price, in fact, uh, is not respecting this price level. So obviously, this was not a demand level. The price now is crossing, has crossed that level. So, but at least I have taken, I have banked a profit and taking into account the time um, along the day. So knowing that the time will become more and more problematic, I do not regret that exit. Okay. Um, this kind of setup run is less obvious in CRB charts, with constant range bar chart. It's more obvious in time bar chart. Because remember, in a constant range bar chart, all the bar have, have the same size. And the size of the bar is from the high to the low of the bar, uh, weeks and tails included. Okay, so the pattern you mentioned is less obvious in the CRB chart. And the obviously this was not a demand level. I have closed my trade, so I'm forced to wait for another opportunity. I will perhaps not take, okay, due to the time constraint now. Should this pair be the pound card, for example, I could take the next trade on the pound card. Because the card is an American currency, and uh, when we are after the Frankfurt and the London close, we enter into the second half of the U.S. session, and so trading a pair with an American currency, it's possible. Remember, so there were natural sessions for uh, each pair to trade. And the natural sessions are defined by their currencies. The pound is a European currency. We have three European currencies, the euro, the pound, and the Swiss. We have two American currencies, the US dollar and the Canadian dollar. And we have three Pacific currencies, of course, the yen, the kiwi, and the Aussie. So the pound kiwi is made of one European and one Pacific currency, so the two best sessions to trade this pair are the ASEAN and the European session. Similarly for the pound yen. This is why when we are after the London close, this pair will become less worthwhile to be traded. The liquidity on this pair will decrease importantly to almost zero, never zero of course, but to a level which make it not uh, worthwhile to continue to be traded.
if I would not have taken my exit here with this possibility uh, of the rejection of this max price of this max price level, I would have made my exit here because here we have another exit setup triggering. So is it possible to work with this system with high income ratio to double the account in two weeks, for example? Ha, <laughs> Rami, <laughs> this is a question which is impossible to answer with certainty. Because in fact, what is the, what is the point? So <clears throat> let me take my pen here and I will change the color of my pen. So with the max, and especially the max ETF standard. And what I'm using is the max ETF sum here. On average, on average, the reward to risk ratio will be around two to three hours. Okay? Two to three hours. Let's say, let's be very conservative, two hours. And whenever we have a losing trade, on average, a loss will be minus 0 0.5 hours. Okay, and so now you ask, is it possible to uh, double an account in two weeks? In two weeks, you have 10 trading days. Okay, and let's make it simple. 100% uh, in 10 days represent approximately 10% um, per day. Okay, let's ignore the compound effect. So let's say 10% per day. Okay. Now, knowing that um, on average, if you monitor just one pair, just one pair, you will have between two and four uh, opportunity per pair. So let's say on average three trades. If you monitor four pairs, which is still um, easily feasible, you will have 12 opportunities. Okay. 12 opportunities. In these 12 opportunities, you will have approximately nine of them being winners. You will have two loss and you will have one break even. With nine win, you will have so uh, 18 hours of profit. With two loss, you will have one hour of loss. So you will make Seven, 17 R of profits, okay? Now, in order to have 10% in one day, okay? In order to have 10% in one day on uh, uh, on 17 R, this means that you need to take a risk of approximately um, a little more than 0.5 R percent, approximately. But this is on average because some week you will have better results, some week you will have less results. And this is following four pairs, okay? Four pairs. Yeah, uh, if you compound the result, this means that you need only a seven percent profit per week. But you need to be a little uh, per day. You need to be a little more conservative because you cannot exactly compound day after day. So let's le co consider really eight percent or even ten percent. It's better. But to achieve a one hundred percent profit in two weeks, you need to monitor enough pairs to have enough opportunities per day. Okay. So this gives you an idea of the number of pairs you have to monitor and to take trades, to take trades. But pay also attention. This means taking a risk of one person, uh, half a person per trade. Uh, and if you follow four pairs, if you follow four pairs and you take one person per trade, at some point this means that you may have a risk, a global risk of four percent. Is this global risk acceptable for you or not? If this is not acceptable, you will have to limit the number of simultaneous trade. And so possibly you will have also to monitor more pairs in such a way that when one trade is closed or when several trades will be risk-free, you have additional risk you can assume. 
And so it can become so a more difficult process because following more pairs may be more difficult, more challenging. Or four person per trade is a, a high risk, uh, Rami. It's a high risk. And why is it a high risk? Because there is one reality in training, which is a cruel reality, uh, which is the following. Even if you have a 75 winning rate, which is a high winning rate, okay, you may still face losing strikes. A losing strikes is a series of successful losing trade. And with such a high winning rate, you can face between four and ten losing trades in a row. And believe me, ten losing trades in a row, uh, so losing trade in a row, will happen, will happen. My own record is six losing trades in a row for now. If you take a four percent risk per trade, okay, and let's suppose you have just three losing trades in a row, three of them, okay, you will have a drawdown of 12% if you are stopped out on your initial stop loss. If you have five losing trades in a row, you will have a drawdown of 20%. In the worst case scenario, and this will happen if you have 10 losing trades in a row, you will have a drawdown of 40%. Can you accept these drawdowns? And this is the big question. If you can accept these drawdowns, there is no problem to take such a risk per trade. If you cannot accept these drawdowns, you have to decrease your risk per trade. Okay? And this is a reality you have to take into account. And this is something many, many uh, traders ignore. Even with an 80% winning rate, okay, even with an 80% winning rate, you may still have between 3 and 8 losing trades in a row. And this is when you are not facing clusters of losing trades, because the reality is even more uh, difficult than you can imagine. You can have, for example, six losing trades in a row, okay, then one winning rate or two winning rate or two, two winning trades, and then again four losing trades in a row, then one winning trade, and then perhaps five losing trades in a row depending on the market conditions. And this kind of situation will happen for sure. Imagine the drawdown you will have after such a sequence of trades. So you have to analyze, depending on your own winning rate, what, what are worst case scenarios you can face and adjust your risk in order to sustain, to survive the drawdown these cluster of losing strikes will create. And this is where the trade risk management and the money management will be extremely important. Don't consider only the winning rate in itself. And the winning rate is something which is fluctuating. Even if you have 75% winning rate, sometimes your winning rate will rise to a higher level, even 90%. But sometimes, depending on the market condition, this number will drop to perhaps 55%. In these circumstances, even if it is for just a few days, you will face these clusters of losing strikes. Okay? The best trader, uh, it depends. The best retail traders, Rami, yes, uh, rarely use a risk of more than 2%. Uh, sometimes when they uh, master uh, many, many, many aspects in the market, they, they dare to take 3% but very often maximum 2%. Now, the traders I know uh, in the hedge funds or in the bank use risk way, way smaller, but because they have no choice. They, they use risk uh, less than half a person, sometimes 0.1% or even less, because they have no choice. They have to handle so large position that in such a way that should they use a larger trade, they will never use, uh, they, they will never find the corresponding liquidity in the market for their trades. But in the retail space, yes, between 1 and 2% is a wise risk. I will not say you that it is a normal risk, but it is a wise risk, because what is the, 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 uh, a normal risk? A normal risk uh, should be um, subject to each trader. Each trader must define what is an appropriate risk. It depends on the trader's risk averse. I am a very risk averse, so for me 2% is 
a too high risk. For you, perhaps it may be a normal risk. Okay? And in the max advanced course, this is one point when we consider going deeper into the trade risk management, why 2% is a maximum wise risk. I explain that why. You see here, I have said this would have been my other exit level. So in the pound kiwi, and you see the, the price has rejected that level nicely. And with the time flying, it will be less and less probable. It may still uh, be possible, but it will be less and less probable that the price will continue to go uh, further downward. Okay? For the reason I have explained when uh, many trends exhaust between the Frankfurt and the London Open. But the possibility still exists. Uh, you talked about a very firm financial management and it's very difficult to do serious damage to the account. Financial management is very wonderful. Uh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a question to survive. Trading is a survival game, uh, in fact. And so uh, uh, the, the fact that many retail traders blow their account is because they ignore the risk aspect of the trade. They are um, focused on the potential profit they can make, believing firmly in the rich quick scheme. But in fact, ignoring the risk is where they will be trapped most of the time. Because remember, if you are stuck in a losing strikes or a cluster of losing strikes, your drawdown will increase linearly. But in order to recover a drawdown, your profit to recover will explode exponentially. Let's give me you some numbers. If you have a drawdown of 20%, if you have a drawdown of 20%, okay, you will need to make a 25% profit just to recover at break even with your trading account. If you make a drawdown of 50% on your account, you see the drawdown has been multiplied by two and a half, you will need to make a profit of plus 100% to be just break even in your trading account, your profit has multiplied by four. If you have an 80% drawdown, so you will need to make 500% profit to recover just break even. And with a 90% drawdown, you will need to make a 900% profit. So the drawdown will increase linearly, but your profit will explode exponentially. And this is one of the main reasons why many retail traders, ignoring that fact, so will fail in trading. Okay? So the money management and the trade risk management, but here I'm talking about the money management. The trade risk management is what I have explained, how to bank some profit, how to adjust the stop loss, to reduce progressively the risk on the trade until being risk-free, but the money management is one aspect which is very often uh, uh, neglected on the risk aspect. Many traders focus on the profit aspect, but never on the risk aspect. But this is the most important point in trading. Okay? Well, if there are no further questions, so uh, if there are questions, of course, uh, I will answer them. Um, if you have in the future, in the coming days, other questions, feel free to contact us. We will have uh, tomorrow um, another presentation which will be an overview of the two courses we propose you, the Max ETF Primer and the Max ETF Standard. It will be at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. You will receive, uh, of course, perhaps you have already received an uh, um, invitation email. And so in this presentation of maximum one hour, I hope, I will describe a little more in detail the curriculum of the two courses. So in such a way, you will have a better idea of what we teach in these two courses. So tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. But you should receive uh, uh, invitation email uh, for that. So that being said, I thank you very, very much for your participation today. I hope you have enjoyed my demonstration here today about our trade risk management. And you can see that I never tried to predict what the price will do. I trade in agreement with the way I perceive the global context. And so uh, 
and you see that the rules are almost mechanical. In fact, and I have always explained in advance what my decision would be. Okay, so no discussion at all. Always explaining what I do before I take the decision, and this is what the max is. In fact. So thank you very much again for your presentation. I hope to see you tomorrow for our Max Preview webinar. Otherwise, I wish you a great, great weekend. Trade smart in the coming days. And so see you in the other side of the window. So uh, thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Rami. Thank you for all of you. I really appreciate so your comment. And thank you to the Max graduates in the private Max uh, chat room. So, so have a great weekend. And in the meantime, take care. Bye, everybody.